Yes, sir. Okay, uh, as I can see, you have been to very prestigious educational institutions. Kendra Vidyalaya, Ravensa University, Integrated BA, PG. I say, oh, you have done integrated BA from Ravensa University. Huh? Yes, sir. Then uh, you, why you have mentioned that separately? Sir, actually, beard, um, there was a section for beard. That's why I have written. And I'm confused. I have not written the okay, form right now. Okay, that is fine. No, no problem. No problem. So, so, uh, so having educational background from such uh, prestigious institutions, you could have been a good, a good teacher. And uh, you have been continuing uh, continuing as teacher also. And so, uh, what prompted you to come here, come to the civil services? You could have contributed a lot uh, in making the society, in building the foundation of students, in uh, creating future of uh, the country. So, why? Why you are here? Sir, currently I'm working as a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, but the scope is uh, here limited. I'm only restricted to education sector only. In civil services, I can uh, expand my scope and I can work in various sectors. So that's why I wanted to join civil services. Don't you think that now the country needs more teachers than civil servants? Because what is ASER? Yes, sir. What is ASCR? A report. ASCR. ASCR report. There is a, there is a, there is one annual report called as ASCR. Do you know? No, sir. I have no idea about it. Annual survey of education. So as per that report, children lack basic analytical skills, basic mathematical skills. Okay. The basic reasoning skills, even in the higher class students also, they also lack of those skills. So in this context, don't you think that a teacher is more required for a society than a civil servant? If the skilled teachers like you will come to civil services, then what will happen to education? Yes, sir. Teachers are required. Uh, civil but I think uh, if I can join civil services, then... I can work better and uh, um, there are, uh, and I can also, as a civil servant also, I can ensure that in my area, schools are pro functioning properly and educations are being imparted uh, rightly that I can do, sir. Many schools uh, area I can second, sir. So I, I, think I, 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 I would like to say that you are now a specialist in teaching, okay. but you are opting for a generalist profession where your work, work will be only to only to coordination. You, you told that, I will ensure that schools are functioning well. You only coordinate. Okay. Yes, sir. You will be another spoke in the wheel. Okay. So what, what will happen to your specialist training that you have got rigorous training for being a teacher? You are leaving that. And permanently, you will leave it. Okay. And uh, that will look no use for you in future. And being a civil servant, you cannot be a full time teacher. Sir, I think that uh, if any uh, any opportunity I can get for, I can get an education sector work, whatever experience I have gained mm -hmm. in pedagogic skills, mm -hmm. I can uh, impart some new ideas. For example, the, in schools, there are many activities uh, which can be conducted for holistic development of children. Here, I can get more ideas and insights as a teacher if I join into civil service, if I work in that particular area. Okay. What do you understand by geopolitics? So geopolitics means... Um, uh, the uh, uh, Geopolitics means... Sir, uh, the use of uh, geographical uh, strategics and uh, the placing of an position. And uh, so can I say another time? Mm, yes, you can, you, can, you can say again. So 
sir a geopolitics means how geography of a region helps the country to develop foreign policies and uh, to build the national interest uh, and uh, its uh, choices and preferences okay then tell me how geography of india has helped this uh, help our help our country to develop the things you mentioned sir so india's location is in south asia and uh, it its location is in the uh, tip is in indian ocean mm. and uh, it has an ocean it has named as indian ocean it has linked uh, to africa linked to south east asia so mm. in uh, connectivity in trade it has helped and as well as its northern border is in himalayas uh, bounded by uh, physical okay, barrier I, himalaya okay i i am more interested not in geographical boundary you mentioning i am more interested how our geography i know our geography how our geography has contributed to development of the things you mentioned our national interest priorities foreign policies how our geography has contributed to this sir in terms of uh, alliances building and in terms of uh, co cooperation with other countries like middle east then with asean uh, then currently sir the indo pacific uh, is in uh, is in the center of foreign policy in the mm. center of the world where india is playing a crucial part mm. and uh, it is so uh, and the world center stage is in indo pacific and uh, india is as is in the center hence india positioning as a geopolitical power is rising and its importance uh, is uh, attributed in it okay what are central asian countries the so central asian countries are uh, the landlocked countries uh, known as kazakhstan kyrgyzstan turkmenistan uzbekistan and uh, mm -hmm. uh, one one asian mm -hmm. countries i mean turkmenistan turkmenistan you could turkmenistan yes sir acha how geopolitically significant the central asian countries are for india so central asian countries are energy rich countries and uh, they can uh, supply energy? energy to india the natural resources which kind of natural so resources natural, uh, so uh, crude oil crude oil look okay. natural gas sir natural gas sorry sir. Yes, natural okay. gas. another thing you know <clears throat> fissile material you know fissile material what is a fissile material fissile material yes fissile material uranium uranium yes and those fissile materials are also we get uh, there, there is also yes, reserve yes, of fissile materials in uh, central asia yes sir hmm. okay go ahead how these are geopolitical significant in the, sir india's location and then how central asia is geopolitical significant for india uh, so one is energy requirement another okay. is so as it is proximate uh, as it is uh, um so it can be um, international north south transport corridor that is okay. also connectivity okay. aspect that is significant acha what another is that so what, what is that corridor from where it begins from where it ends sir um, it begins uh, sir it uh, st petersburg to uh, end sir i think uh, i am not able to recall okay we are using that corridor and the land it to land it ends in <coughs> the chabar port in iran yes sir chabar port chabar port in iran okay acha uh in geopolitics in geopolitics of middle east okay, what role india plays uh, so uh, in, in geopolitics of middle east uh, india has a very balancing role mm -hmm. and uh, although india has well relationship uh, with iran as well as saudi arab uae recently so uh, we have signed a civil nuclear agreement Uh, then, sir, with uh, other countries like uh, Egypt, 
and uh, israel also we have a strategic linkage with israel mm -hmm. um and i think sir in middle east as our we have uh, large petroleum demands uh, from middle east as well as we have uh, our diaspora diaspora living there human Achha, is, connection okay diaspora is one of the important issues Achha, tell me that uh, recently the conflict that is going on in the middle east do you think india has any role to play to resolve that conflict uh, so the middle east has been the flashpoint uh, recently and uh, to resolve the conflict although uh, india is uh, with respect to israel india is following the hyphenation policy mm -hmm. and uh, it is maintaining its all options open i don't think india is taking any sides or will take any sides uh, in future okay uh, so india is now okay, waiting okay, for further development okay well, india is waiting for further time to resolve this conflict fine uh, so uh, you were uh, teacher in brajan bodjana government high school uh, who is this person after after whom this uh, your school is named Sir so, Brajanath Badajena is a famous uh, literary person of Odisha. He is mm -hmm. also known as war poet. He has written Samara Taranga, a running commentary uh, of uh, of war between Dhinkanal Maharaja and Marathas. And he is also the first pers uh, person to write Od Odia prose, which is known as Gundicha Bize. And uh, due to his achievements uh, in his legacy, our school is named after him. Okay. Acha, uh, uh, in Dhenkanar, uh, Dhenkanar was a princely state or not? Yes, sir. It was a princely state. How many princely states were there in Odisha when we got our independence? Uh, you can, you don't no, know. No, okay, no, no problem. And who were the first princely states to join Odisha? I'm not sure about it. Okay, which subject you are teaching to students? Sir, I'm teaching English. You are teaching English. Okay, so being a student of political science, uh, don't you think that uh, we should um, instill the knowledge of political science or geopolitics in students? Are you doing that? Sir, actually, uh, I in free time in arrangement class, I. Yeah, update them about current affairs and what's going on in world about wars and mm. what is India positioning. I do update them, but uh, not in regular classes. In regular classes, I teach them English. No, no. I, I think you are doing. You are uh, making them aware about the happenings around the world. Okay. Acha, uh, what is the basic deficiency as a teacher? As as a teacher, you are working since. Uh, January. So, what deficiencies you uh, you find in our higher education system? I I would say high school education system to be particular. So, first is infrastructure and resources. For example, okay. teaching learning materials to teach mm -hmm. students. Okay. Second, sir, uh, proper training with mm -hmm. uh, to teach students with online uh, materials and smart classrooms that is needed. Okay. And third, sir. Uh, more number of teachers appointment because to fulfill the teacher people ratio mm. uh, that is uh, one thing i would like to mention and so more a, more okay, can you, okay okay i got it can you can you say a few important features of new education policy uh, that, uh, that 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 are aimed for improving the learning outcome of students yes sir so uh, the importance of uh, new education policy is that multilingual education, that three language mm -hmm. formula, mm -hmm. and uh, to teach from primary one to five with multilingual education. Mm -hmm. Another is the pre-teaching, preschool teaching, that is the uh, teaching by Anganwadi workers, mm -hmm. and uh, that is also important preschool age and uh, fundamental literacy and numeracy for primary students. And in high schools, so are more tie up with uh, vocational and skill education. To make students learn about skills so that they could uh, find employment after their completion of high school. That's why tie up with uh, ITIs um, are being made, 
and uh, another thing is that uh, teaching uh, with relating more to outer environment outside classroom so that they can learn about social values too that is another feature of nep okay 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 got it uh you mentioned about anganwadis hmm? <clears throat> there is a scheme called as icds what is that the integrated child care development uh, scheme in which uh, uh, no, development yeah. for the it, integrated child care the, the term care is not there it is integrated no, child no, it is not scheme it is integrated child development services services sir okay what icds aims for <laughs> that icds aims for improvement of nutrition as well as uh, providing uh, reproductive care to mother as well as providing uh, prenatal and postnatal uh, care uh, to pregnant mother as well as vaccination program also included mm -hmm. along with uh, providing uh, anemia tablets to uh, okay. child Fine. very good what is the role of asa in the community sir asa are accredited social health care activists uh, they are the primary community face that they, uh, they interact directly with the people uh, they uh, uh, distribute contraceptive pills to women uh, they uh, take care of the vaccine women during uh, their pregnancy tenure as well as uh, they act as the Uh, as the face of community services, healthcare services to people in village areas. Okay, fine. Let's so tell me that we have many legislations in uh, our country for uh, ensuring safety of women. Okay, so can you name few legislations for say, ensuring women safety? Yes, sir. Prevention of sexual harassment at workplace, two thousand thirteen, is one of the legislation. uh then so we have uh, one portal known as cbox portal uh, which has recently been uh, opened another so uh, all um, for women safety all the legal legislations i know that uh, i am asking about that only name few legislations that are uh, they are in place for safety of women okay have you heard of something called like domestic violence act Yes, sir. I have heard about it. Uh, that is Domestic Violence Act. Also, there is uh, Protect Against Women. So tell me that uh, Don Domestic Violence Act or Dowry Prevention Act. All these are there. Don't you think that the legislations who are they are to protect women against any kind of uh, adversities? Don't you think that they are being misused? Sir, in case of misuse, I may not. Uh, sir, I want completely disagree that they are not being misused. In few cases, maybe there would be misuse, but I think the purpose of the act is to serve the larger interest. Hmm. Sir, in that case, uh, if uh, there will be transparent investigations, and uh, if misusing part is will come forward, then that could be shorted out. But the larger interest is to serve justice work. Actually, facing discrimination, violence. Acha, okay. You told that the larger purpose is to serve the interest of women. Fine. In spite of all these legislations, do you think that we have been able to ensure the safety of women? Sir, I think that uh, in uh, we do not uh, achieve uh, the purpose. And there are cases where uh, okay, you, we facing... have we have not achieved the purpose. What more needs to be done as an administrator? What you will you will suggest? Ah, uh, sir, I think behavioral changes and psychological aspect is a much needed reform. But as an administrator, at the ground level, I will ensure uh, providing women self defense training and uh, tactics so that uh, they can apply if uh, they will face such incidents. Of uh, violence or uh, any assault, uh, okay. and sir, I would. Okay, please go ahead. Hmm. Sir, another thing is that if we will sensit uh, conduct sensitized programs and uh, awareness programs, uh, including both women and men from school level too, because mm -hmm. sir, in school, 
especially girls are also being uh, molested in schools so i think both teacher parents at parents level teacher level if at school level if we can teach them about what is good touch what is bad touch all these things as an administrator if i can ensure that in my uh, stick or in my block that could be i can do okay acha tell me last question for you that uh, do you think that you are empowered as a woman yes sir i do think i am empowered as a woman why you think so because uh, first and foremost is i am financially independent i yeah. can make my choices and next sir as i am doing uh, in so as and i think sir i have uh, in my family i have given more freedom to choose whatever thing i want to choose so that okay, is so also you, you, at you the level been, of family you have been given the freedom of decision making yes sir okay and these are the two things that define women empowerment economic independence and freedom of decision making can you have got all both the things so you are empowered already okay okay uh, thank you very much your interview is over thank you sir